Thank you. Welcome. This is Amy Milne of the Quilt Alliance, and we're doing another Meet a Member Spotlight. And our member, the member I'm talking to today is Sandy Teepin. And uh, Sandy's in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, I'm in Cary, North Carolina, so not too far apart. Um, Sandy, we met, I think we met at Quilters Take Manhattan um, years and years ago. I think so. I think at the first, the first one I went to anyway. Yeah. And so that's how you found out about the Quilt Alliance, I think. Right. And tell us a little bit about your, um, how you ended up in Atlanta. Um, and then I'd love to hear about how you got started quilting. Well, I, I followed my second husband to Atlanta. Um, he took a new job in 1982 and here I am again following a spouse <laughs> <laughs> and he went to work on July 5 1982 and I had to figure out how to live here wow and where had you been prior um uh we lived in Yellow Springs Ohio oh. Tom was with Dayton Daily News and uh he's a was editor of the editorial pages oh wow so, and that's the job he came to Atlanta to do. Bigger staff, uh, bigger city, all of those things. Um, um, I, I, I found my UNICEF crowd. I found uh, arts and cultural affairs, parks, recreation, things I felt were safe for me, anti -pol not political. Mm -hmm. um, and I got, instead of waiting for people to come to my door to greet me as a new citizen, I had to go out and get involved. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's kind of, you know, my, without school-aged children, you know, I think women have to find another route. You know, if your kids are in school and they're young, you find the parents of your kids' classmates, that kind of thing. But that, that certainly was not my route. Right. Um, Tom, Tom and I did get involved in the, um, the arts community. We, you know, joined the High Museum. We went to the symphony. We did everything that made us Atlantans because we loved being here. And that was the route. I mean, and we met lots of people. I made lots of friends. Sometimes he called himself Mr. Sandy. <laughs> 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 and sometimes I was just sort of like um, left to talk to the the spouse of the famous person he was talking to, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, we really worked well together. We really did. I think that's uh, an interesting thing about being in the arts is it is a way to build community. And when you are someone who moves around a lot, you moved, uh, I imagine you moved more than just that time um you weren't you didn't grow up in ohio did you no i grew up in southern wisconsin i thought we lived outside of chicago <laughs> 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 because my parents took us my sisters and me to we went to the chicago art institute we went wow. to the chicago symphony uh, we we knew the field museum uh we went to you know we had a, a cultural connection I had a cultural connection really early on in my life. Ah. So that set an, a tone for you that you knew you'd find community if you found uh, arts organizations and so right. forth to connect to. That's right. And tell us about your um, first arts experience as a young person. What, was, what were your first things in college and maybe before that? Well, I had a very exciting um, art teacher in high school. In fact, he was the one who suggested I apply for a scholarship. And um, my dad wanted me to go to University of Wisconsin and I got a scholarship to Layton School of Art. So he started matching every dollar I would earn in my part-time jobs. And event from from uh, Milwaukee and the Layton School of Art, I went on to Minneapolis um, School of Art. They accepted me and I put in another couple years there. Um, and um, 
I met my first husband there. I had my child there in Minneapolis. Uh, I followed uh, that first husband to Yale. He got a degree and he got a job in Kansas City, Missouri at KCAI. I walked into the theater and I said, I need a job <laughs> and continued my um, costume shop connection, which I had also, um, you know, had just that, that's kind of what I know how to do to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, a after, a after that marriage failed, um, uh, and it was failing as we were moving to Ohio where he was being hired at Wright State University in Dayton. And, um, I, um, I started again with a theater company and with an arts organization and with the Ohio Arts Council, uh, where I got a prize one, one year for a community uh, development, community arts development for mm -hmm. a, a, an abandoned school uh, that we turned into an art center. Wow. So I was I really making it up as I go along because yeah. I didn't graduate from anything. I don't have a degree, um, except I think I've had a very exciting full arts life. Yeah. Do you think that uh, the fact that you consider yourself sort of making it up as you go along, that that was um, an advantage? Uh, to becoming an artist and making your own work? I certainly do now. At the time I'm hearing, well, uh, and when I see my colleagues all across the country saying, you know, where their degrees come from and where they taught and the books they've done and I'm thinking, and I'm only a little bit envious. Right. I've, I've, I've just done another route and I, I show up the same I show up at the same places. So it, it, I guess it matters to someone it matters to, you know, but it, at my age now, I don't, it doesn't matter because I'm doing what I like to do. I love what I do. I'm modest, I guess, modestly successful at what I do. Yeah. And um, I get to talk to you. <laughs> And you have done collage. I saw that you took classes with SCAD and it was the Savannah College of Art and Design, but in Atlanta. In Atlanta, yes. A lot of people don't know they have an Atlanta campus. Right. And I, I, I thought the advent of SCAD in Atlanta was kind of like, like opening up a new museum. Yeah. All the, uh, I, we went to all the lectures, I saw the films, I saw, I greeted artists and writers. It was kind of like, it was another, it's another portal for Atlanta. Oh and when I found out about the uh, continuing education idea, I thought, oh, that's definitely me. And at the time I was in a recoup um, mode because I'd had a serious accident and I sort of had to get my life back. You know, I kind of had to figure out, well, what do I do with this? And, um, um, and I really, I met some friends there. They were doing a lot of things I wasn't doing, but I'm I, we were all learning together. I still have the friends from that era. I mean, it's still. How but, cool. And I'm learning about, you know, I'm starting to pick up uh, more things about fabric and more things. And I'm thinking, I've got all this fabric at home. I've been a fabric collector. I've been a representative for a fabric company. Yeah. I've, I've got, you know, uh, I've got a lot of stuff. So I started, um, I started using my fabrics. I started entering shows that I read about or uh, found out about. And, um, you know, and I, I got into some things, you know, which was kind of like immediately, it's a very, uh, a very rewarding um, element in my life. And I got a lot of encouragement. And uh, certainly the people around me um, you know, that, that, that creative, that creative crowd from city of Atlanta cultural affairs and parks recreation. I and mean, it's just my old, you know, it's like falling in. It was just fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulous route. 
Well, you have, um, I can see how that would feed on itself. You know, that after you get into a show and you get some encouragement and you get sort of a new um, community that you belong to, it really encourages you to keep going. And then at what point did you start thinking um, that you wanted to get bigger and bigger? You wanted to have a one person show, which I know you had your first one, one person show. Well, I got, I long responded ago. to the invitation. You know, kind of like, I'll go anywhere I get asked to go. Right. And um, uh, the, the, the request or the, you know, the challenge came from Paige Walker and Carrie. And if you want it, would you be interested in a solo show? And okay, let's try it, you know. And I don't think many people, I, I don't think I had name recognition. I don't think people came because they knew who I was. Mm -hmm. But uh, I love the museum. I love the, uh, the community. And I think the, um, the PAQA South women, I have a, a delightful crowd. They're very artistically inclined and produce a lot of shows. There's a lot of talent there. And I'm very happy to be part of it. Yeah, and that's the Professional Art Quilters Association. Right. If anybody wants to be a part of it. Right. Um, what other groups do you belong to, and what does that mean to you, having that community connection? Well, I belong to Bullock Hall Quilt Guild, and, that, and we meet in uh, Alpharetta, which mm -hmm. is north of uh, the city. Right. I, there, I like the people, and they meet during the day. <laughs> which at my age, it's very important that I, yeah. uh, I not travel at night. So, you know, just for my own safety. So, um, and I, I've, uh, I've participated in, in the guild, in the, uh, in the annual show. Um, I like to spread the word about the guild and the shows that happens. So, you know, that's how I participate there. They're mostly traditional quilters, but we've had, they've had, we've had some, some good workshops and, and it, and it's, uh, it's another part of, of my community and certainly part of my development as an artist. Mm. In fact, I call all of us artists. I don't refer to anyone as a quilt maker. You know, that's, you know, we are artists. I mean, get right to the point. Yeah, that's that's important to um, many artists who make quilts to have that distinction. Um, and what other arts? You mentioned collage, I think. Um, yeah. What other art forms have you tried and enjoyed? Um, um, I guess not many. I I know I'm interested in a lot of things like printmaking and. Uh, mm -hmm you know, tie dye, you know, the dyeing. I've done all that. You know, I don't need to do it anymore. I found my I found my niche and I can yeah. I can do that. And I love it when people say, Oh, I I only dye my fa own fabrics and I and I'm thinking, you know, the fabrics I remember as a kid, you know, which is World War Two, were really not very nice. What we have now is such an extraordinary amount of commercial fabrics available. I, I don't have enough of a lifetime to, to you know, use up all the things, the beautiful things I'm seeing that are produced com commercially. And that's where I am. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's our, the choices oh. we have are incredible. And the colors, everybody, we've, the, the industry has, has really captured me as an artist. And I... I want to be a big proponent of commercial fabrics. <laughs> I love the oddities. I love the color and yeah. the digital part of it. I mean, it's just so exciting. It is. And, um, you know, I think that there's a place for everyone. There's a place for hand-dyed fabric. There's oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm interested. I want to share with everyone something that you do as a part of your self-promotion and self-marketing you hired someone, Barbara, and I think her business is, I wrote it down, She's Wired, which I love the name of that Isn't business. Isn't it lovely? And her slogan is simplifying your digital world. It's brilliant. So tell us, um, tell us how you came to hire her and why and what you think it allows you to do that you couldn't without her. Well, 
I guess I'm not telling any secrets out of school. They were let go when the newspaper got smaller. And here with her partner, Sue, Claire, uh -huh. they were smart enough to start their own business. Yeah. Okay. This is why if you let me go, because I'm your, I'm the tech, I'm, we're the tech team at a major newspaper. You let us go. Well, what's your response? Okay, I'll show you. I'm going to start. We're going to start our own business. All right. <laughs> Very excited. Tom hired them right away to, so he could work at home. Tom is your late Tom husband. And my husband. And, and, um, and right away, I'm thinking, well, I need a computer too. So <laughs> here comes Sue and Claire and uh, Sue, Claire and Barbara, and I get set up. And so I'm, you know, writing and, you know, doing, looking at stuff, shopping, you know, that kind of thing. Well, eventually, you know, they're taking care of my photographs, uh, the documentation, they're entering, entering shows for me. I find them in the magazines or online. And then, and Barbara can enter. Um, we did three this morning. We entered three shows this morning. Wow. And you find them, you pass them over. They get, they do the, um, the details, entering your information, pulling your right. digital images. And they know, and they know how to pay for it. So, you know, and that, and that's, so that's all, the, that's our, that's our scheme of things. That's how I operate. And I mean, without them, I'd be struggling to figure out the tech stuff, plus trying to do what I do in my sewing room. I mean, I, for me, that's just too much, too much. Yeah, it really frees you up to do what you oh, exactly do as a part of the process. Exactly. Not they, that much different than farming out the quilting or oh, the... Right. And I do farm out the quilting. I make the tops. I find the back uh, that goes with my work. And I have a quilter in um, Jackson, Georgia, Regina Carter. I talked to her this morning. I'm going to meet her Saturday morning in a driveway. <laughs> I'll pick up what she's done for me over the month and I'll drop off some new things. She does all the quilt. I call them our quilts because her work is outstanding. Oh, wow. She does beautiful work. I don't tell her how to do it. I hand my pieces over to her and I've never been disappointed. So I'm working with another artist. And how, tell me about your documentation process. Um, I think that's probably kind of, um, probably not our strong point. I think we try, uh, Barbara saves the entries in Dropbox and uh -huh. I uh, tag everything and we try to keep, uh, I try to keep um, a running I, um, roster of what's out and keeping a folder about what's happening this month and that next month and, and trying to keep up with that. I find that's one of the most difficult things oh. to do. And, um, but the fact that Barbara keeps the photographs and probably knows more about where I am than I do because she's made all those entries. <laughs> and so, are, so do you, um, do you put labels on the back of the quilts? Yes, I do. Okay, and is that does that change with each with whatever show you're sending it to, with what they specifically want on the label, or do you have a consistent way of labeling? I have a. I, it's pretty much comes on with every quilt because sometimes it needs more information. Right. But I make sure it has my just my uh, label. I make sure it has my name and my phone number. Um, and uh, anything in a size. I don't put a price on, I don't put a price on, on a right. label. I put a price on a tag. Yeah. It's neat that you put the size on there. Right, because it, I think people want to know, well, how big is this thing? You know, if I really like it or if I don't like it, you know, right. how big is it? Yeah, because I mean, if they're a collector, they probably came to that show knowing the spot that they want to fill. That's right. So it's that's good right. to know, have an estimate. I mean, that's how it. I would approach a show, you know, if I want, or if I want, if I'm looking for something as a gift, and, or, you know, I would have to know, well, you know, how big is it? Yeah. 
<laughs> and do you collect uh, quilts as well, fiber art? Oh, I well? do, I do. In fact, people bring me quilts and uh, I've done some restoration works. Um, mm. I've taken some things to um, uh, Houston with me to be uh, appraised and come and bring things home. And of course the appraiser then goes to the owner. But um, I, uh, two of those quilts went off this week, just a couple days, Monday, um, to a woman I knew uh, who's no, uh, deceased and she had two tops that she discovered in a family storage unit. Wow. And in perfect condition, I, I took them to Regina, she quilted them, I put, we put the back on them, I did all the handwork, and I have another cat, another have another new friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, so cool. Very are, happy. Are these um, antique or vintage quilts we were talking yes. about? Yes, yes, and I handle them with care because I, they're family items, and I always ask people to bring me whatever they know about the quilter or the owner. Very neat. Uh, so I can conduct a, I can produce a label. There you go. Like I've been taught by Quilt Alliance. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Let's quilts. Uh, we now know that Anonymous was a woman. That's right. And that her that, that work should be documented. It's American history. And it I is. think one of the things you told me, uh, I think it was Quilt Alliance, that the Smithsonian wasn't even wasn't documenting quilts probably until the early 50s. Oh, I I didn't know that. I know that they've had some controversy over quilts in the past. Um, but I think the one thing that's important that you're doing that a lot of people forget to do, you're labeling the quilts that you make, contemporary quilts, but then you're also labeling the quilts that you acquire. That come, that come my way to make sure when they leave my house, they yeah. have some sort of identification. Yeah, we don't like to think about the quilt outliving its maker, but most of them do. Most of them do. Yeah, and so it's it's uh, an important step. That's one of our big campaigns right now is labeling acquired quilts um, just as often as you're labeling the new ones. Well, and I often make the point, I said, we want to, we want to document it because you don't know what's going to happen to it in 50 years. Right. And if it ends up at the Salvation Army, let's be sure that who made it is identified right. for the new owner. You know, you you because you can't control that part. You can't, but you can also. I like that you put contact information on there. Um, you know, if a quilt person who uh, purchased the quilt at Goodwill wanted to track you down or try to track someone in your family down, or at least learn more about you. Well, the, there's there's the, access to information. We should be able to find right. We should be able to find out more stuff. Yeah, about people. For sure. Well, I, w I don't want to keep everybody waiting. I want to look at some of your pieces. So I'm going to share my screen here. And I love that picture of us. I know. <laughs> it's the cutest. We were in our booth at, uh, at QuiltCon, I think. Yes. Not this year, but last year. Last year. Um, so this is a great, two great shots of your studio. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, so cool I, I've learned to keep my nail clippers close to my machine because any snags kind of slow everything up so I try to you know that's kind of an important part of my sewing room and there's my clippers <laughs> I see that so tell us about what machine is that that's um, an, um that's an Elna mm. And I own three Elna's right now because uh, I keep them circulating. Uh, there's, you know, so one can be in, I try to make, I try to think of my sewing machines as um, taking care of them like a car. I spend a lot of money on that. Yep. And I spend a lot of money uh, on my quilts. So I want to be sure it's in, they're in good running condition. So if, if I want to sew until two o'clock in the morning, I don't have to fret about a sewing machine that's not working properly. Yeah. Oh yeah, what a beauty. It looks very impressive. Um, and then I think a lot of people will be um, 
comforted to see that even Sandy Teepin has bins of fabric overflowing in the corner there. <laughs> and magazines and paper and, magazines. and, you know, stuff I just can't let go of, you know. Yeah. And you got to be able to find it. So the clear bin is very Maybe that's more useful. Very Actually, like I, I, I've always thought I, I, I like the discovery of my own stuff. You know, while I'm looking for something that I know about, I may come across something I did I had forgotten. Yeah. So it all comes back into the pile. And I, I like that too. I, I really admire, I saw something this week in a magazine where uh, a, a woman had, an artist had an alpha set up just like I do, but she had all her, you know, all the yellows in one bin, just like mine and my sewing table. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, she would have a heart attack coming <laughs> into the studio. <laughs> she is yeah. so organized. There are certain um, personalities in the right. world, in the art world, that cannot tolerate the mixing of the colors or the space to be too. Um, and I think that's kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> place for all of us. There's a place for all of us. There is a place for all of us. So this piece is, was, tell us about this piece a little bit. I've got about, I think I loaded up 10, maybe 10 photos. So tell us about this piece. Well, this piece, interestingly, just sold about two weeks ago. Oh, great. It was part of a, a, a fairly new gallery uh, that opened up the, like the second week of March. Uh, we, I went to the opening. Uh, I had um, I had a lovely evening with friends. It was a full house of an, uh, and the next day it was everything was shut down. <laughs> oh yeah, but it sold online. Oh good. And uh, I learned a lesson, not to poo poo the idea of selling quilts online. Yeah. Uh, this quilt um, it at the at the gallery where it sold was its third outing. It went to um, it went to the Lamar Dodd uh, Art Center in Lagrange, Georgia, uh -huh. and it also went to the uh, Chastain Art Center, uh, which is a uh, gallery which is maintained by the City of Atlanta, uh, in a show called Fabric Flash, which I co curated. Fantastic. So and then it sold just, uh, just about, just about, and it's, it, it's off to have a new house. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. Congratulations. Well, and this one, I still have it. And I, I just love, it's almost like I love the, um, almost red muddiness of that red and the way all the, the red here picks up the red there and it's just so playful but it's um it's kind of i think it's very rich i think it's like it is it's just so intense the blue is intense the red in the middle is intense it's just and, and, and who, then that is there red. one designer here of the fabric that you can name or is it a mix of designers uh, it's a mix of designers. I have no, oh, I, you know, I, I don't, uh, I'm really fond of the uh, Calf Facet uh, palette, but I don't mind mixing them up. Yeah. And you don't <laughs> use patterns. All of your. No, I don't use patterns. Original, yeah. And I like to say I don't even use a, 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 a cutter. I, ha I have scissors. I have Gengar scissors and I keep them sharp and we go, you know. That's what I do. I like that. Oh, this one. Um, this one has been in a couple of shows too, and I. Uh, it's. Uh, it was a real challenge for me because I loved. I knew what I wanted to do, and I had a hard time putting all the stripes together. But once I figured it out, you know, you first thing in the morning. Oh, I know how to do that. Yeah. It came together in a, like a half an hour. So. Mm -hmm. And I did exhibit it at ADAC, which is a decorative um, uh, 
center in Atlanta. It didn't sell, and I'm really surprised because I think it just outmatched everything else in the room. Yeah, it's gorgeous. What size is this one? It's about 54 by 60. It's, and it's bigger than my sewing table, which is 45 by 45. But um, I, I, I brought out all the stops for this one. I think it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And this piece, tell us about this one. Well, again, I, I guess black and white fabrics are the only things I sort from the rest of the stuff. Okay. Because I really, um, I, I think the graphic, um, I don't know, it looks like typography to me or yeah. uh, etchings or black and white paintings, um, uh, lithographs, I mean, um, woodcuts. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of that's part of my, um, my art gene. So when I find those, and I think they go together, um, I, I, I like working with them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of times, uh, 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 a black and white show will appear, and I can enter it. So, um, but this one is pretty tasty, I think. Yeah, and I love the little red and green. Whoop. Yeah, that's uh, actually that comes from a skirt. Uh, it was a fabric I used uh, to make a skirt for uh, my daughter, I believe. And when she didn't want it anymore, I said, "Give it to me." And I started cutting it up, Just cycle it back in. No, or just put it right back in. Put it right oh, back in. It's Oh, and this is where I fall in love with batiks. I buy them wherever I can find the right kind of colors that I like. And um, I, I don't ordinarily use purples, but the batiks are fabulous. And I think that just challenges me in another way to use uh, not only color, but fabrics I don't ordinarily use. So that's how these happen. And, I, and I'm, very, I'm always very happy with the outcome. Gorgeous. I love that color combo. It, it's very pretty. Whoops. Oh. Oh. The house print. Oh. I, made a, I made a collage out of um, using paper and um, fabrics. The roof is from a New York Times magazine ad. Oh. <laughs> and uh, there are a lot of other paper things I used, but you can see that I used um, the fabrics we probably recognize from the facet co collection. And so, um, and I continue to pursue that whole idea of house. Uh, you know, the idea that we all want a roof over our heads. We always want, we want to go home. We want to feel the sense of, of um, comfort and shelter and that's about home and house. So I'm not shy about that. I really, uh, I really, I really pursue that. I love it. Um, this is a, uh, one of my first quilts that I exhibited. I exhibited it first at the Abernathy Art Center, which is another city run gallery years ago. I met a lot of people at that show um, and uh, got a lot of encouragement um, out of out of pursuing what I thought was kind of kind of brand new. Um, I hand, I quilted it on my on my Elna. It's not professionally quilted, but I um, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy this quilt. It was last seen in Denver, Colorado. Last year, they uh, uh, the core gallery in Denver announced um, uh, submissions for something they called the Red Show. Oh. I <laughs> Barbara Barbara and I entered this one. And I said, "Well, you know, it's red, but it's red palette." Blah blah. It got in, <laughs> and uh, sure enough, it got a big. Um, it got a, uh, a good spot. I went to Denver. Uh, stayed at the, I stayed at the hotel downtown and, and met a friend and I just, and 
I, it came back and I'm thinking, well, I still have my red quilt. It'll go on. <laughs> yeah. And, if, and um, is this, are any of these quilts utility, do you use them in a utility way or are they all wall quilts? Um, well, this one appears on my bed and not all of them, they're not fragile, so they can be, they can be used as bed quilts, but they're not that big. So, you know, they really belong um, on, a, on a wall or, and I can, not all of them are fitted with the sleeve so they can go on the wall. But if I know they're headed to a show, I, pr I will put them, uh, a, uh, a sleeve on them right away. Right, a lot of people hate that step. Oh, beautiful one too. <laughs> I don't know. Um, red, red is um, is probably one of my favorites. I think it's it, it it's got a lot of all the, you know, it's got a lot of the staccato. It's got a lot of, um, you know, things are happening there. It really is. It's very it's very eclectic and exciting all at the same time. A lot of movement. Yeah, a lot of, lot of movement, a lot of movement. I don't know if that's untitled. Is that the right title for that? Um, I, I, without it in front of me, I don't know, but I like the depth of it. And I think what I tried to do here, I think there's a bottom like a U shape and a top like a U shape. Mm. And, uh, and I may have been, I don't remember exactly, but I may have been running out of fabric. <laughs> and maybe I didn't have enough of the red to go all the way around. Maybe I didn't have enough of this to go all the way around. So I, you know, I improvised and that's what I came up with. I think it's gorgeous. So that's a great, honest answer. So these are the chairs. These are wonderful. So um, which one came first? Um, uh, the one on the right. And what happened is a, a friend of mine came to the, um, I don't know how it happened, but she said, I have this ugly old chair at home. Maybe you'd like it. And I, and I said, yeah, bring it to me. And I, I just, I took some scraps from a quilt um, and I took it to the upholsterer and I left it off with him. <laughs> and the funny part about this, and it doesn't show up on this picture particularly, but when the phone rang one day and he said, Mrs. Teepin, we need more of that striped fabric. He didn't have enough for the courting he wanted oh, to do. Oh, right. I'm thinking, I have another artist friend. He was not going to finish until he had all the fabric he thought he needed for my chair. <laughs> and so he just... He, they, they're just wonderful over there. <laughs> I love it. So, and I took that one, uh, the one on the left of them as well. And again, he used all the, all the scrap pieces, put it all together. The back on this one is beautiful. Oh, very cool. Because it's all finished all the way around. And this chair, I think was, I think my daughter Jenny found it on the side of the road and brought, mom, look what I got. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, and I remember finding another chair, um, and I I went past it, and then I found a way to turn around, went back, and I bought it for like twenty dollars or something. But that's the way it happens. I mean, you have to be, you have to be, um, a, uh, you have to be an explorer. You sure do. And look what you were able to create this great combination. You know, three D. Um, container for your piecing. I mean, it's just beautiful. That's right. And I sold two chairs that, uh, that were, I don't think we have pictures of those here, but, <clears throat> but uh, I, I made a, it was a, it was a duplicate chair, but I put different colors on them. I, one was re a red palette like this right. one. Another was more gray, uh, gray, uh, black, white, and, but the two of them sold together to one household. Oh. And I, when I was invited, um, we picked up, a, we picked a day to deliver the chairs. And, and uh, my, the buyer said, and of course you'll stay for dinner. 
So the table was sat in here, both of my chairs. Aww. And um, it, was, it was just one of those wonderful evenings. And, and the couple has another home in Palm Beach. So the chairs often travel from Atlanta to Palm Beach and then they come back. <laughs> Fancy chairs. Those chairs. fancy, fancy chairs. That is so cool. Well traveled you'll chairs. Have, you'll have to get them to take a photo of the chairs in their Palm Beach life. That's right. I should do that. Yeah, that would be That's cool. Good idea. <laughs> and this is a pillow, and it's called Paper Pillow with Tom's column. Whoop. Yes. Referring to your husband's column. The, well, this started out to be a collage. And when we were putting together the Chastain show, everybody's in a room. We're all, all the artists are, are, we're all together for the first time. And somebody had the idea, why don't we make pillows? And it was one of those rainy Saturday nights. And I kept thinking about thinking about that. I'm thinking they're going to make pillows and I need to make one too. It turns out I took the collage off the wall started putting it together in a more um, consistent way and put it and sewed it up. So when I went back to our next meeting, I had a pillow. None of the others had done a pillow. It's so neat. So it's literally paper. It's not uh, it's paper that I sub, uh, I put on the computer and exposed it to fabric. Oh, okay. So it's like a uh, commercial. It's someone's printed custom printed. Right. So it, of the, it, yeah. I start out with fabric, but I end, or I start out with print, but I end up with fabric. Gotcha. And it goes any way, you know. It's still here in my house, of course, but sometimes I just turn it out around and stand it on its end, that kind of thing, so I can yeah. live. With it. So neat! What a what a great way to uh, take again take the two D piece into three uh, D. I love the idea of soft sculpture. I could probably, you know, I could probably do that. <laughs> yeah, I do too. And this piece uh, won, I think, Best in Show. This is a picture. This is the one that won Best in Show. Yeah. What show was it? It, it was uh, <clears throat> the uh, Arts Clayton, which is a suburb just a little uh, south of us, close beyond our airport. And they had, a, um, I was encouraged to enter the show. And, and I, I went to the opening and then they announced best of show and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, that's me. <laughs> and sure enough, I got the, they bought it and uh, it became part of the uh, permanent collection and which they, uh, what they're doing with permanent collection, they have this show every year. And what this show does now is travel around Georgia, exhibiting Georgia artists. And I, I am more thrilled about this than a lot of things in my life mm -hmm. because I think it, it re, I'm part of that Georgia artist loop. Yeah. And uh, I'll be, this piece will be exhibited all around the state. That's fantastic. And are they um, offering it online at all? Uh, are they what? Are they going to share it online? Any of the I hope so. I think yeah. everything's come to a standstill. I don't, we don't know what's going to happen to anything right now. Surely. But hopefully they'll also create an archive that uh, stays online. and That they can use. Right. See, I love the idea of telling the story of a state through its artists. Right. I think so, too. I think it's one of the best ideas. And again, it's that commercial fabric. And my idea was if... If a manufacturer takes up a design like that and prints vegetables on fabric, they are certainly thinking outside the traditional box. Yeah. I'm going to buy as many yards of that as I can afford. That's cool. And sure enough, I, uh, you know, it's like the one, there's some mothers with sweet corn. I mean, who never, or oak or um, kale. <laughs> Yeah. Who 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 would buy that? Well, who would manufacture it if they're manufacturing it? I want it. Yeah, and then you're encouraging that kind of eclectic focus and That's right. things that you might want to buy again or in the future or something like that. That's neat. I I would love someone to walk up to one of my pieces and just laugh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, 
like, that's not a quilt. Oh, yeah, it's a quilt. It's an art quilt. That's <laughs> great. It your band, you can put it on your table. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have loved talking with you, Sandy. You're such a treasured uh, member of not just the Quilt Alliance, but of the quilt community. I know a lot of, uh, I know you're involved with a lot of other organizations too. So you really put your support behind many organizations and we appreciate it. And I hope that uh, folks will go to your, I actually, let me um, exit this screen because I wanna show, if I can, hold on. Oh, and I must remember to uh, ask you to say hello to Debbie. I will. I surely will. I just wanted to show everyone that you have an Instagram page and an Instagram account, and it's Sandy's label. And then you have a Facebook page, too. Right. So, and a website. And a website. Yeah. So, so um, we will put the URLs up when we uh, post this video so that people can visit you. That's and, great. Yeah, and I just want to thank you. This was wonderful. I'll, I'll be sure and tell you what's coming up, too. I'm really planning on uh, a solo show in, in 2021. And there's a story behind that, too. And I'll tell you when it all, if it all happens. Okay, well, I'll save a time for me and we'll do another video then. Sounds great. Okay, Sandy, take care. Thank you for doing this. Well, thank you, Amy. I'm, you're a treasure yourself. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that means a lot to me. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.